In this video, we will see what is the difference between linear velocity and angular velocity, as well as the relation between these two. We will start with the linear velocity. So, let's say we have an object on the circle that travels s units from this point to this point. If we are given the amount of time this object moves from this point to this point, then we can find the linear velocity v by dividing s by t. s represents the length of the arc and t represents time. For the length of the arc, we can use any units of length such as inches, meters, centimeters, yards, and so on. For time, we can use any units of time such as hours, minutes, seconds, and so on. In the example to the right, we will find the linear velocity of an object that takes 5 seconds to travel 20 inches along a circle. So here we have the circle and the object travels from this point to this point the distance of 20 inches. If it takes this object 5 seconds to travel these 20 inches, then the linear velocity v equals 20 inches divided by 5 seconds. Then the linear velocity will be 4 inches per second. So if we divide this distance by 5, we can say that every second the object travels 4 inches. Now let's talk about angular velocity. With the angular velocity, we have an object moving from this point to this point along the circle, and the central angle formed here is angle theta. This angle is given in radians, and we can say that the object travels from this point to this point, theta radians. Then the angular velocity of this object, denoted by the letter omega, is theta divided by t. Theta again is an angle in radians, and t represents time. So, let's see how we can find the angular velocity in the example to the right. Here we will find the angular velocity of an object that travels pi radians in 4 seconds. We will start with a circle and then we will draw the angle of pi radians. So, here we have the circle and pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. So, if the object starts at this point, then it will complete half of a rotation. Now here we have the angle traveled and let's find the angular velocity. Omega equals the angle of pi radians divided by 4 seconds. Then we can say that the angular velocity is pi over 4 radians per second. This means that every second the object travels pi over 4 radians. And it takes 4 seconds to complete half of this rotation. So, if with the linear velocity we divide the length of the arc by time, with angular velocity we divide the angle by time. Now, let's see what is the relationship between the linear and the angular velocity. For this, let's review the following formulas. The first one is the length of an arc. The length of an arc in a circle equals the measure of angle theta in radians multiplied by the radius of that circle. So here we have a circle and if we multiply this angle theta in radians by the radius, we will get the length of this arc. Next, we have the formula for the linear velocity, v equals s divided by t. And the last formula is the angular velocity, omega equals theta divided by t. Now, to form a relationship between the linear velocity and the angular velocity, I will start by writing down the formula for the length of an arc. That is s equals theta multiplied by r. From here, I will divide both sides of this equation by t. Now, the expression formed on the left side represents the linear velocity. Then, we can replace s over t with v. 
On the right side, the expression theta over t represents the angular velocity. Then on the right side, in place of theta over t, we can write omega. Then we will bring down r. This formula represents the relation between the linear and angular velocity. The linear velocity equals the angular velocity multiplied by the radius. Now let's see the following example. So here we have a circle with the radius of 5 inches and an object that travels from this point to this point the distance of 20 inches. The angle formed here is 4 radians. And we know this because from the formula above to find this angle theta in radians we need to divide the length of the arc by the radius. 20 inches divided by 5 inches will give us the angle of 4 radians. Now let's say that the object needs 2 minutes to travel from this point to this point. So we can write that t equals 2 minutes. Now let's find the linear velocity of this object. The formula is v equals s over t. In this case s is 20 inches and t is 2 minutes. Then the linear velocity is 10 inches per minute. So we can say that the object travels 10 inches every minute. Now let's find the angular velocity. The formula is omega equals theta divided by t and theta is 4 radians over 2 minutes. Then omega equals 2 radians per minute. So every minute the object travels 2 radians. Now let's see the relation between the linear velocity and the angular velocity. This formula tells us that we get linear velocity by multiplying the angular velocity by the radius. And indeed, in the example below, if we take the angular velocity of 2 radians per minute and if we multiply it by the radius of 5 inches, then we will get the linear velocity of 10 inches per minute. And we can write that v equals omega multiplied by r, which is 2 multiplied by 5, and that will give us 10 inches per minute. So in this example, we clearly see that the linear velocity equals the angular velocity multiplied by the radius. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and thank you for watching.